And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the grand finals of the Digital Schoolhouse Tournament. Now, obviously, we've had some fantastic Overwatch action already today. We've had four quarterfinals, and we're waiting to get into our semifinals. But now we have a very special occasion for everyone. We have some of the pros from the gaming industry sat here, uh, ready to answer some some questions from everyone at the moment and uh, obviously tell us a little bit about the games industry and uh, how everyone can get involved. We're going to start with yourself. We're going to start with uh, Charlotte Rouget Murphy, uh, Junior Digital Account Manager from Sega Europe. Um, wanted to start off by asking you uh, quite simply, uh, what was your first job in the gaming industry? So my first job in the games industry was a production intern at Splash Damage. I just kind of moved country and I was like, oh, I want to really get into the games industry. And I was like, oh, I'll just go for it and managed to get that. So I really wanted to be a producer on like the development side. So yeah, that was my first job. And what do you do now at Sega? What does your sort of role involve? Uh, what's your role in the, in the gaming industry at the moment? So as a digital account manager, I basically liaise with all of our partners that sell our product digitally. And it's kind of my job to manage those relationships and make sure that they get all the help that they need. And, you know, we just help each other. OK, fantastic. Well, I'm sure there'll be plenty more questions uh, for you in just a moment. Uh, we'll move on to someone we've already spoken to today. Uh, and we're coming back to you again. Obviously, we have Gio here, uh, esports commentator and host. What was your first job in the game? Because it's slightly different here. We are sort of an on-camera yeah. as, as opposed to sort of being behind the camera. So technically, this is my first actual job in the gaming industry. But if you want to count it, a couple of years ago, I did do work experience with Criterion Games, who are an offshoot of EA, um, because at the time I wanted to go into development. Um, but that wasn't a job, I wasn't paid for it, it was just sort of work experience, so I, technically this. And it is quite a big part of it, isn't it? Especially on camera stuff, is getting that experience under yeah. your belt. Uh, where did you find those opportunities? So I actually entered a, I don't want to say a competition, because it was more to get an opportunity to go to GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference back in 2016, uh, which, uh, to have it all paid, it was actually with Yuki. Um, and so I, I ended up going there, and I met some people there, and I remember talking to them about how I was interested in going to, at, at the time, I wanted to be involved in physics engine development. Um, and so I met these people from Criterion who were really interested, and so we set something up. So that summer, I ended up going and, and doing some work experience with them. OK, fantastic. And then next year, we have uh, Lucy Nadrag, uh, new art elite League of Legends analyst yeah. uh, for Excel. Obviously, I know the guys at Excel <laughs> very well. Hopefully, they're looking after you. Yeah, uh, what's your sort of role with Excel at the moment? So I am a league analyst for Excel, and my job basically consists of working alongside the coach and the players to make sure that they are prepared in the best way possible for their weekly matches that they have at the top like the highest level you can in Europe so I'm assisting the coaches the managers and just making sure that the players themselves feel ready and just helping them way out of it way so I can no pressure no pressure no pressure no pressure no not at all um, and what was your first job in the gaming industry how did you sort of find yourself in this position so being an analyst was actually my first job and I actually started out at Excel anyway but I went away, tried coaching at another organization, and then I came back to Excel, so they're, they're clearly doing something right. Um, but that was really my first breakthrough to eSports, and I've kind of loved it, fell in love with it, and I've just stuck through it. OK, fantastic. And then next to you, we have, uh, we have Mary Antiel, which is the head of eSports and partnerships at Belong by Game. And now game is obviously something that a lot of us would have uh, spent a lot of time in uh, over our lives. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role. Yeah, so I look after all of the eSports operations, um, running tournaments across a range of different games. Um, we run tournaments from kind of a grassroots level, so for people first starting out all the way up to um, kind of the best in the UK scene. Um, and then I also look after partnerships as well, so working um, with publishers, with teams, with other organisations, um, to agree commercial deals and rights for eSports tournaments that we run. And how did you first get into the gaming industry? So uh, my first job was in game, so 14 hey. years ago. <laughs> 14 years ago, I started off in a store, um, started as a Christmas temp, and I've still not left yet. That's a beautiful story, isn't it, in yeah. itself? Yeah, that's a beautiful story. Uh, thank you very much. We'll, we'll come back to you with some more questions in just a moment. Uh, at the end, we have uh, Liz Prince, uh, the business manager, uh, Amicus. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, Amicus is a recruitment business. Um, we specifically recruit for the video games industry. Um, I've done recruitment for 25 years, but this is my first job in video games, which I started 14 years ago. Um, yeah, so in terms of recruitment, we obviously put clients and candidates together. So, when any of the studios or the publishers or the esports organisations need talent, 
um, we go and find that talent and try to attract them to the roles that, that we have. OK, and uh, very quickly, uh, how are you finding the esports industry? Because obviously that's something you've, you've been in recruitment a long time. Yeah. I know you sort of change roles in recruitment. How are you finding the, the industry? Um, esports is a fantastic um, part of the games industry. I think it's, um, it's, it's just the next iteration, really. It's, it's getting some of the biggest games to the most enormous audiences globally. And I think it's also great for people to be able to watch the games as well as play. So, I mean, one of my big passions is about getting more girls into the games industry. And I do think that um, esports is a way that, that girls can start to get a foot into a world that perhaps has been seen a little bit as a, a boys' culture, which I don't think any of us would agree with. Um, I'm outnumbered so at the moment. I'm, <laughs> and that's exactly why we've done it. Yeah, fantastic <laughs> stuff. Um, obviously, I want to say, I used to be in recruitment myself before I got into the, uh, the esports industry, so we might have to have a chat later on <laughs> about, um, yeah, about some things. But um, I actually want to open it up now to everyone who is uh, in, the, in the audience, because obviously we have uh, some fantastic minds for you guys to pick away at if you've got any questions about uh, the gaming industry, how to get into the gaming industry that people uh, might want to ask. So I think we actually have a hand up over here yes sir microphone's just coming there it is thanks um so actually i want to ask about careers not in the game industry so um i'm very interested in the skills that are being developed uh playing games whether it's on a professional level or just at home um and i wonder what your uh maybe liz in particular but but any one of you uh think about uh transferability of skills um, and how can that actually help uh, any any uh, game player in in the uh, real world career uh, path? So, are you specifically thinking of transferable skills from a game player with perhaps work experience in another industry, but wanting to get into games? Is that way you're thinking? No. So the uh, so the other way. So um, I would say someone who has been um, achieving quite a bit and putting in quite a bit of uh, uh, time and, and skill development in playing games, whether it's a uh, pro or or uh, amateur, and how does that how can that translate uh, to uh, co uh, other career paths that are not necessarily in gaming. In games, I guess. Um, I guess the majority of the skills in playing playing games is is actually about team participation. Um, so it's a little bit like um, doing really great project work at uni um, or at, at school level. Um, it's it's being able to show an employer that you can work together, that you can communicate. Um, I think some of the best communication that you see is actually amongst these teams. Um, I, I don't think there are necessarily any um, skills. So, you know, when we're talking about things like um, hard skills, so technology skills or um, things that you might learn playing the game, it's mostly about the softer skills and, and the character building stuff. I, I don't know if anyone else has got Anyone else want to jump in? Well, I, I, I don't think if, if all you've been doing is just playing the game, I'm not sure you can like write that on your CV and get away with it. But I do definitely agree with the team working thing is yeah. at the very least on a personal level, it should give you an appreciation of how mm. important teamwork is and how important it is to coordinate with other people. But also, if you do have any experience playing on a team, whether it's in like a really local small tournament, you don't have to be a pro, as you mm. said, then you probably could be able to say, OK, well, I've done this. I've been able to work under pressure. I've been able to perform and, and bring out not just a, a product in that you know you're selling your team but also in we've been able to bring out results in this high pressure situation a very alien situation in front of other people we've been able to communicate well to achieve our goals we've been able to work as a team uh, and things like that I think are pretty important okay fantastic uh, anyone else in the audience have any questions yes one over here now we've got to try it would be the other side wouldn't it so we've got to get the mic all the way across. oh look at look at Dan he's done a great job well done Dan all right please far away Hi, yeah. Um, uh, what would you recommend to anybody who would like to get into the gaming industry that might not be gaming itself? So, like commentating or just behind the scenes stuff like organizing the event. Like, what would you recommend to those kind of people? Anybody want to take this? Yeah. Um, so, if you're looking at maybe something like marketing or that side of the industry, um, I would highly recommend making a portfolio. Um, if you're doing it kind of for fun anyway, something that you can present to somebody within that field is amazing. Um, and with regards to kind of event organization, I, as a hobby, do event organization for charity work. So if you do see charities kind of making those events and esports things, then definitely get in touch with somebody that does that. Um, it will at least give you an idea of what is necessary to participate in those and kind of what skills that you need to bring to make an event like this, really. 
Uh, I, I think, as you mentioned, commentating as well, which obviously I think I'm the only person here who actually does that. Uh, obviously, when you're talking about on-camera stuff, like that can seem quite, uh, not gate-kept, but a hard, a hard route to get through. For me, actually, the first, the first thing that I did was uh, to show anyone that I had any kind of on-camera presence was I'd done YouTube as a hobby for years. Nothing to do with video games, but I managed to show that to someone and say, look, I'm, I'm good on a camera. Like, I can talk on camera. I have confidence. And, and then they let me like have a go at uh, doing video game host, uh, esports hosting, and I knew I wanted to do commentating, which I practiced in my own time. And uh, you can stream that, you can put that on YouTube, and then you can gradually hone your skills, do it with someone else, and then you can start to show that to people. Uh, and so I think that the general point, uh, to kind of go off what you were saying as well, is you want to build some kind of portfolio showing the skills that are required for the job you want to do. And in some cases, that may involve getting a degree. Marketing would probably be a good example of that. Not that you require it in a lot of cases, but it's still a good way of um, showing formally you have those skills. But uh, yeah, I think it's mostly recognize what skills that you require in order to do that job and put together a way of showcasing that. And if you're a big fan of, say, Overwatch, for example, while we're here, um, a really good way of showing off your skills as a commentator would be just to pick matches that are already live, the, uh, just the raw footage, and commentate over that. And then show that, you know, I have the knowledge about the game, I can commentate on this, and use that as part of your portfolio as well. Yeah, I would have to agree. I'd have to agree. Doing a lot of stuff off your own back, basically. Mm -hmm. Make a name for yourself before someone comes to you is the best way to do it. I want to get into commentary. But um, any other uh, questions we have? Uh, yes, young man, please, with the NYC shirt on. So I was just wondering, <clears throat> where do you, where do you guys see yourself in five years? Like, do you see yourself oh. still doing the same job in the wow. game industry, or like <laughs> branching out if you're doing like marketing to commentating, or the other way around? Do you have a job to be filled? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we can go along the on the line along the line pretty quickly. Uh, we'll uh, uh, absolutely. So I'm going to retire hopefully um, <laughs> in about five years. Um, no, I, I will 100% be doing a similar thing. I think we will have um, done an awful lot more work on the initiatives that, that we've got running, um, as well as the, the recruitment that, that we do. Yeah, I mean, for myself, I'm hoping we continue to keep opening uh, gaming arenas across the country. So I want my job to be getting much bigger. <laughs> lots more tournaments, uh, lo lots more activities and events going on. So I'm hoping that I can continue to lead my teams and um, make everything we do really, really, really good. Um, for me, in five years' time, I would have hopefully finished my degree by then and then go full-time into eSports. At the minute, I'm getting kind of best of both worlds and doing both at the same time. But afterwards, I would like to go 100% into eSports. Yeah, in five years' time, I'd say I definitely want to be doing the same thing, uh, maybe branching into some other games as well, as I, I mostly do Overwatch now. I have done a couple of other games recently. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as eSports grows, there's going to be more and more um, events and things like that, so hopefully more opportunities for me to work and get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess mine's the difficult one. So as an account manager, I guess five years' time, I'd like to be more in business development and kind of grow that way and do more relationship building with other companies and other divisions of the companies, which is always fun. Like I already work with Mary's company to do charity tournaments and that was just a random coincidence yep. <laughs> really. So hopefully there in like five years. But where do you want to be in five years? Yeah. <laughs> No idea. I'd like to go into the actual like gaming side of it, like actually being a gamer. And I'd like to branch into like loads of different games to get a, a wide range of skills to develop. Cool. Cool. It's still good. Secondary school. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> good answer. Spread, spread the hedges. Uh, any more questions uh, from the floor? I think we have one more uh, just down at the front. Uh, how f like big do you think esports is going to grow and how hard do you think it's going to get into the industry, be that player or production? I think it's a very good question. Wow. And I'm yeah. pretty sure that none of us are quite sure. <laughs> um, we'll start with you, Liz, again. If... I mean, this is, gosh, I think it's just the start, isn't it, of, of the esports industry. Um, in terms of how difficult it would be to get in as a player, um, I do genuinely believe at the minute we've got this sort of Champions League, pre uh, Premier League type of arrangement. So I, I do think it's the best of the best that are, are becoming the biggest, the biggest players. Um, I'd love to see maybe perhaps more niche games being played so that the wider audience can actually become 
better known as, as players and, and get that sort of level of sponsorship as well. Um, but in terms of the size of the market, gosh, I, I hope it just keeps growing. Yeah, I think it's um, fair to say esports is, is definitely going to keep growing. I think everything suggests that um, esports is um, going for a really, really exciting time in terms of the growth and the interest. Um, I think there's still a lot of work for lots of different um, businesses and esports to do to help um, make the journey for new players, for organisations much easier. Um, I think there's a load of different people need to be involved in, in helping that. But I think everybody in the industry recognises the potential esports has and there's a, a lot of a lot of desire from everyone involved to make esports as successful as we can in the UK. Yeah, I think I agree with your points and say that esports is, in my eyes, one of the fastest growing industries that we have. You know, Twitch is such a big platform like millions of people will tune into that and watch the game that they desire. But I also think that as time continues, it might be harder for a player to get in just because the standard is going to continue rising and getting harder and harder. But I think from a managerial and business side of things, mm -hmm. I think that will make even more opportunities available for people like yourselves to get into. So I don't think that it's there's a limit. I think it can go even further than it is now. More organisations and just the scene as a whole will be taken more seriously mm -hmm. from sponsors and other routes available. So I think it's going to continue as one of the fastest growing industries there are. I think it's a, it's a testament to how fast esports is growing, the fact that esports as an industry has been around for about 20 years now, and a lot of people talk about it as if it's only a few years old, and that's just because so much of its growth has been happening in the last few years. Um, I think what you guys have said about like you know the, the level for talent is going to get much higher, but also the age that talent start to peak is going to get much younger because talent are being picked up at quite young ages. So if you're in school, start now if you want to be a gamer, <laughs> a pro gamer. But um, I think something that's going to really help esports grow because it can't just rely on kind of venture capital I think it's going to be a lot more collaboration with traditional sports which we have seen uh, amongst a number of organizations working um, uh, with traditional sports I mean the craft group own an overwatch team mm -hmm. um, just to kind of name one example uh, and as that the divide and the taboo of kind of traditional sports and uh, and esports starts to minimise. That's when we'll start seeing a lot more growth from that perspective. Well, it's difficult to go last because you guys have made like all the points that I want to make. But yeah, I think esports is just going to continue to grow. The rate will probably slow down a little bit, but it's definitely a booming industry. And with regards to obviously being a player, I think, like you said, you know, that entry level is going to be really young now. Um, we see some amazing players throughout the entire of, well, all games, really. Um, so, yeah, practice. Don't get off on your schoolwork, though. So, you know. I think it's a perfect way to end it, isn't it, really? Uh, thank you so much uh, for all of the questions from the floor. The guys will be around, of course, for the rest of the time that they're here. So uh, find one of them if you have any more questions you want to ask. Uh, can we just give it up, please, for the panel? It's been absolutely fantastic to have you all here. Well, thank you so much. Uh, of course, for answering all of those questions. Uh, but for now, we're actually going to go to a very quick break because when we got back, we've got plenty more Overwatch action. We've got to find out who's going to be in our grand final. We've got two semi-finals to come. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>